गुड इवनिंग मैम Can we start? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, just wait. Can we start with the presentation? Let the presentation be there. Yes, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. A very good evening to each one of you. Before we start, as it is, we thank our Almighty with the attitude of gratitude. Heavenly Father, grant me courage and a strong will to overcome the challenges that life throws at me. Help me rise despite the forces that seek to destroy me and your plans for me. Deliver me from evil and lead me one to success. My dear friends, how can you smile without an eye? How can you be fine without an eye? How can you wish without an eye? How can you have a friend without an eye? But can you laugh without you? Can you achieve success without you? You cannot. So both I and you are very important. It's very important to start with the attitude of gratitude, thanking one another. I would like to thank each one of you for taking out this time and spending it here to attend this session. Life is a journey between birth and death comes sea. So life is all about choices. You choose to be happy or you choose to be sad. You choose to accept challenges or you cry in front of the challenges. Some of you might have thought that, oh, again, today we have to attend one hour session. While some may be good, let me see what I can learn from this session. So it's all about attitude, you see. You can be like a carrot, which is hard, which is put in the hot water, becomes soft, and you're not able to face the challenges. Or you can be like an egg, which is soft, but when you put it in hot water, it becomes hard. You still cannot face the challenges. Uh, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, my screen is visible. Mic is on. Is it okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So life is, you can be a beans. Once you put the beans in hot water, it mingles with it. So what would you like to be? An egg, coffee, or the beans? And mingle with it and face all the challenges with resilience and emotional strength. Before we start, let us say the self-affirmation. As I say, please repeat. I accept myself the way I am. I accept that I am human. I accept that I am not perfect. I accept that I am responsible for my own life. I accept that I have self-defeating behavior that I need to change. I love myself. Very important that before we start teaching the children to be emotionally strong, we ourselves have to be very, very strong. Now imagine a young student Faced with the daunting challenge of a difficult exam or a personal setback. Despite the obstacles, they persevere, drawing on their inner strength and resourcefulness to overcome adversity. This resilience not only helps them navigate the present challenge, but also equips them with the confidence and determination to tackle the future obstacles with resilience. And this is what we have to teach the children. And this is the power in students. It's not just bouncing back from setbacks, but about thriving in the face of adversity and building a foundation for lifelong success. Because this resilience which we build in the children is for the lifelong. You know, what is happening in the present generation, they are not able to face any failures. 
but we have to teach our children to be emotionally strong right from childhood to accept failures. Like today, we just had the English elocution, and there was a parent who came crying. What is this? My child did not get the prize. How will he face? He practiced so much. So see, accept that. There is so much of competition. Let the child accept failure. So what? If not this time, next time. So we have to train our children to face the challenges. Think of a high school student who faces rejection from the dream college. So instead of giving up, they channelize the disappointment into motivation, working tirelessly to improve their skills and pursue uh, opportunities. The students' resilience not only helps them towards academic success, but also instills in them a source of resilience that will serve the work in future endeavors. Now picture a group of elementary school children working in a participating in a challenging team and working in a group. There may be disagreements. Progress stalls. Instead of getting discouraged, they come together, they brainstorm solutions, they support each other through the process. Through this experience, their students not only learn the value of collaboration, but also develop resilience to tackle the complex problems and to adapt to changing circumstances. Now, do you imagine, do you think, just think of a child when you were learning to ride a bike, how many times you had fallen down? But did you give up? No. But did you, is it? Uh, somebody is writing that it is not audible. Is it audible? audible? Is it audible? I am speaking from here. Yes, ma'am. It's audible. Okay. So imagine a student struggling with a different, difficult math problem. Despite feeling frustrated, they take a deep breath, remind themselves to keep trying to eventually solve it. Now, this all victory. This will give them the victory, builds their confidence and resilience to tackle failure. Now imagine when you were small, when you were learning to cycle, learn to cycle. How many times you have fallen down? Did you give up? No. With each attempt that gained balance and control, solving resilience in the face of setback. That is what is resilience, building the emotional strength. Next slide, please. Nurturing resilience, empowering students for the future, building emotional strength for students. Now, resilience is a crucial skill, very crucial skill for the students to develop, to help them overcome their challenges, adapt to the change, thrive in the face of adversity. And by fostering this emotional strength, we can empower the next generation to navigate life's obstacles with confidence. And what that is what we have to build in them the confidence you know after covid people have lost confidence there's so many people who have lost their job but what is happening now we have to build that emotional strength in them because it is resilience refers to the ability to bounce back from adversity cope with challenges and adapt to change next now this is a very nice reflection of life the toothbrush feels sometimes i feel that i have the worst job in the world Imagine the toothbrush saying that. And then the toilet paper says, yeah, right. Imagine what job I have that you are saying that you have that. So look at the emotional strength they have in them. That is what is shown the reflection of life. Next. It is an essential skill for navigating life's ups and downs over time. You know, having the resilience, having emotional strength. We face so many ups and downs in life. And this is what the children are not able to face nowadays. They don't get into IIT. They commit suicide. They are not able to get into their colleges which they want. They're not able to get, they get into the colleges, but they're not getting their stream. They commit suicide. What is this? We have to develop this emotional strength, the resilience in them to accept failures, to take as a challenge, to accept failures as a stepping stone to success. Resilient individuals, they are better equipped to handle stress, overcome obstacles, and thrive better in the face of adversity. Now, what is resilience? The capacity to adapt well to trauma and adversity. It's hard nowadays for the kids, you know, in today's world. Students' lives are dependent on a consistent, secure, and a loving home. They want a loving home. They want a secure home a well-established support system, both in and out of school, trusting, approachable, relationship. They want good relations. You see, when you see a child not behaving properly in the class, what we see, we uh, mostly the problems start from home. 
maybe the parents are not able to devote time maybe the parents are not giving the love and affection especially now with helicopter parents they are so much they want you know their child to go for everything dance class singing class this class that class so what happens where does a child have a time to play to spend time and now with technology with phones so much it is media all this is so much blocking their way of thinking so we have to avoid making these decisions as teachers we are well aware uh, uh, well aware of how often our students are lacking in this important area so what are we supposed to do we must work to help teach our students resilient skills you know to the, and with these skills uh, skills the students stand a chance at coping with life factors that are not always within their control parents must make their homes more emotionally safe place and that is very very important and that is why we have the counselors you know there are so many broken homes so many broken homes the children that they are not able to adjust they are not able to cooperate they are not able to accept this is what is happening and it is affecting the children so we have then they should feel comfortable in the developing emotionally and this can lead to strong resilient skills next please next slide resilient recover this recovering readily from difficulties faced i will keep trying until i succeed i will not complain if i don't act my way i will make the most use of my spare time that is resilient where you go further and uh, strengthen yourself to overcome all these emotions next slide why resilience matters why do you think resilience matters can anybody just put in you can put it in the chat why resilience matters you can put it on the chat why resilience matters do you think resilience is very important in life nowadays to develop resilience to develop emotional strength you can put it on the chat why is it important according to you why do you think yes it is very important why do you think it is important yes you can put it up on the chat what are your views about to tackle the problems yes to help face the challenges very true yes it is very crucial next slide please adapt to difficulties to cope with the challenges to bounce back yes building resilience in students is crucial for the overall well being and success resilient individuals are more likely to have yes to grow to have better mental health you know now we take care of our physical health but where are we taking care of our mental health and that is why we have so many counselors now it has become that we must have a counselor in every school when we were small we never thought we had never heard that there is somebody called counselor whom we have to go even in class 2 or 3 to talk to because just that day there was a incident where a class 3 girl had gone into a depression why because her ex was talking to her best friend so imagine how they go into a depression and not able to handle emotions at such a such a small age yet to build up your strength academic achievement better social okay academic you can work hard better mental health better social relationship it makes them stronger able to cope with life's problems this is what is happening help manage during tough times they face so much problems in life so how to face to make them emotionally strong you know now adults there is so much of recession going on in so many places so what is happening people are going into depression yes to build the mental health which is very very important to have clarity on purpose very true all these are very important now and that is why a teacher is not only is no more a teacher now she has to be a counselor a guide a mentor you don't have to teach because now they have everything in the google or the chat gpt everything they get but what they need is your affection your emotional emotional love the compassion which they need where they can get so that they can become emotionally strong now the various strategies for nurturing resilience next slide promote a growth mindset now teach them what is it encourage students to face challenges as opportunity to see challenges as opportunities for growth emphasizing that effort and perseverance lead to improvement and success that okay there are the challenges are there there may be failures let us accept that as a stepping stone to success now see even amita bachan 
was rejected. You can give examples like that when he was rejected when he first came to uh, the film world. Why? Because he was tall and because his voice was not good. So how it, how he overcame this difficulty and now he is one of the I can imagine. So imagine if he could go through all this. So we should teach children that how to promote a growth mindset. Fact, foster positive relationship. Create a nurturing and supporting environment where students they feel valued, respected, connected to the peers, to the teachers. Encourage collaboration, empathy, kindness among students. And this can be done only the teacher as a role model. Create a classroom and a school environment where students feel safe and supported. Encouraging open communication, empathy, active listening among students with teachers. You know, this reminds me of a story of a Thompson and Ted. Teacher Thompson and Ted, which is a very nice story. Uh, there was once an elementary school teacher, Teacher Thompson. And as she stood in front of the fifth grade class on the first day of the school, she told the children, lie. And what was that lie? Like most teachers, she looked at the children and told them she loved them all the same. But that simply was not true because there was in the first row, there was a little boy named Teddy Stoddard. Now, Mrs. Thompson had watched Teddy that year before and noticed that he didn't play well with other children. His clothes were messy, he constantly needed a bath, he was unpleasant at times. All the school where she thought she had to review with this, each child just records and when she reviewed the file, she was shocked that Teddy's first grade teacher wrote, Teddy is a bright child. You know, in that school, they have to have the go to the previous record. So he does his work neatly and with good manners and he's a joy to be around. His second grade teacher school, uh, the school teacher wrote, he's an excellent child, but he's troubled as his mother has terminal illness and life at the home must be a struggle. His third grade teacher wrote, his mother's death has been hard on him. He tries to do his best, but his father does not show much interest. You know, this is what happens. We don't see when a child does not do the work, when a child is silent in class or is becoming very restless and naughty. What is behind it? Now, what happened in the fourth grade? Teddy is withdrawn and doesn't share much interest in school. He doesn't have any friends and often sleeps in a class. By now, Mrs. Thompson realized that the problem was and ashamed of herself. So she felt even worse when the student brought the Christmas, there was a Christmas, you know, they brought a Christmas present wrapped with beautiful ribbons, except for Teddy. His, his present was a clumsily wrapped in a brown paper and put in the grocery bag. So he brought it in a grocery bag. He also wanted to give a present. She opened it and there was a stone bracelet with some stones missing. Whole class, you know, laughed. And the bottle of one quarter full of perfume was also there. She placed the bracelet and she placed it and she praised him and thanked him for the perfume. Teddy stayed back and said, Mrs. Thompson, Today you smell just like my mom used to. After the children left, she cried. She cried for an hour. On this very day, she quit teaching and she reading, writing, and she began to teach children. She began to pay, pay close attention to them. And at the end of the year, she found a note for Teddy telling as she was one of the best teachers. Teddy wrote that she was one of the best because she emotionally attached to him. Six years passed and yet she received another letter from Teddy and he wrote he had finished his high school and he was still the best teacher. Four years later, he wrote he had graduated from college and said that Mrs. Thompson was still the best and the favorite teacher he ever had. The letter was signed T.F. Stratford, M.D. So he had become an M.D., a doctor now. The story does not end here. He wrote a letter that he was getting married and was asking her if, he, if she might agree to sit in the place at his wedding that was usually reserved for the mother of the groom. Mrs. Thompson wore that bracelet and also put that same perfume. After the wedding, he hugged her and said, thank you so much for making me feel important and showing me that I would make a difference. So that teacher, made a difference, made him emotionally strong. Mrs. Thompson, with tears in her eyes, said, Teddy, you have it all wrong. You were the one who taught me that I could make a difference. I don't know how to teach. I didn't know how to teach until I met you. See the change the teacher has made in the child. And this is what 
is there, you know, how to foster positive relationship to make them emotionally strong. Then encourage, teach coping skills. Okay, equip children with practical coping skills to manage stress, anxiety, and other difficult emotions. Teach them relaxation techniques, mindfulness, practices, problem-solving strategies to navigate challenging activities. Encourage self-reflection, you know, tell them to write their strengths and weaknesses and emotions. You know, you can, there's a practice which you can do. You can have a class which is called Mending Minds, where you can talk to the children, tell stories, show TED Talks, and talk to the children where that period is used only for only for telling their inner emotions what they feel if they are, they can write or they can share or they can share they can write where they can come out with their inner feelings that period should be there and children should look forward to it for that period you know and that is where they can have self reflection and they can come out with all their emotions set realistic goals for themselves you know larger the, the Break up the larger goals into smaller managerial goals and celebrate progress along the way. Now see the next slide, please. Promote a growth mindset story. Next slide. Mindset. Now see the story of Malala. You can tell the story of Malala, a Pakistani activist, a female who survived the assassination attempt at Taliban at the age of 15. And despite facing grave danger and adversities, she continued to educate for girls' right to education and got the Nobel Prize. And her resilience and courage in the face of violence have inspired millions around the world. Ofra Winfrey, you know, these are the examples which you can give them. Next slide, please. Next slide. Yeah. Ofra Winfrey, media mogul and philanthropist, how she overcame a difficult childhood marked by poverty, abuse, hardship. And she went on to become one of the most influential and successful women in the world. Through her resilience and determination, she has inspired countless individuals to overcome adversity and pursue her dreams. We should tell their stories on such people. Nish, Nick Rujikikhan, how he without, was born without legs and arms and how he faced immense physical and emotional challenges in growing up. And despite of the experiences of bullying, of discrimination, feelings of worthlessness, he refused to let the disabilities defer him. And he became a motivational speaker, a writer, an author, an advocate for people with disabilities and lived life to the fullest. J.K. Rowling, everybody has read J.K. Rowling book, but before achieving success as the author of Harry Potter, she faced years of rejections, poverty, struggle, and as a single mother, yes, she wrote Harry Potter. She battled depression and financial hardship while trying to pursue her dreams as a writer and eventually achieved worldwide acclaim. Arunima Sinha, who was thrown out of a running train, she lost both her legs. And finally, she came to, you know, she always wanted to go to uh, Mount Everest. She came to Bajendri Pal. She took the moti and Bajendri Pal gave her emotional support so much that she finally reached uh, uh, conquered uh, Mount Everest not once, not twice, but thrice. So imagine, you know, these are the videos which we can show it to the children and provide these resources, these uh, supportive resources. Next slide. Resilient children possess the inner strength to bounce back from setbacks. They approach challenges with optimism and adaptability, nurturing their emotional well-being and confidence. Next time. Now this is a case study. The persevering student. I will ask some questions which you can type after this. Sarah is a high school student with a passion for science, as usual they have. Despite facing numerous academic and personal challenges, she remains determined to pursue her dream of becoming a marine biologist. She comes from a low income family and attends a school with limited resources. Additionally, she struggles with self-doubt and anxiety, especially when it comes to standardized tests. So she is a high school student. She has a passion for science. Despite facing numerous academic and personal challenges, she remains determined to pursue her dream of becoming a marine biologist. Now she comes from a very low income family and attends a school with limited resources. Their schools do not have enough resources. Additionally, she struggles with self-doubt and anxiety. They're typical of a teenager where they suffer the self-doubt and anxiety. What are the challenges she faces? 
can you just put it on the chat what challenges is she facing can we put it up on the chat what challenges financial challenges very correct peer pressure yes what else mental challenge excellent stress anxiety yes stress is there anxiety she is facing social challenge emotional challenge economic challenge because she doesn't have the money mental challenge she faces imagine how much of anxiety and social lack of confidence because she is not very sure depression she faces poverty demotivated parent lack of leadership quality mental challenge social barriers lack of resources psychological pressure lack of concentration so all this is now adding on to her the challenges which she think mental stress next slide so limited access very correct to advanced science courses extra curricular activities many problems coping with social changes family financial struggles anxiety about standardized test which undermines her confidence support so what building resilience building economic challenges yes financial crisis and most of the students face this background challenges comes from a very humble family where they are not able to support what do you think will be uh, what resilience building strategies will it be there just go back to the previous uh, slide please yes thank you what resilience building strategies can be adopted to help her what are the strategies one can use yes there lack of and their finance what strategies can be used to build her emotional strength many challenges to succeed now what are this she needs economic support give them friendly environment very good at counseling yes support financial support providing economic support moral support very important self motivation giving opportunities proper counseling will part motivation let her vent out her problem very good yes very important we don't allow children to vent out their problems extra coaching so all these can be provided next slide seeking support she reaches out reaches out to her senior science teachers for guidance mentorship with the teachers and encouragement she explores online resources and opportunities for independent study to supplement her education building a support network she connects with the peers who share her passion for science and forms a study group they meet regularly to review course materials share resources and provide emotional support setting goals setting she can set realistic goals for herself create a study smart goals which are which can be measurable yes encourage her we can get her, help her to set goals you know very important to teach children how to set goals for themselves and do not and should set realistic goals smart goals which are measurable which are realistic which are achievable and not just goals that okay today if a child gets 50% and say that next time the mother say that no you must get 90% it should not be the next goal be it is okay this time you got 50 next time you should get 55 within 55 and 60 so yes they should fix their target prepare for college entrance exam setting goals embracing failures she learns to view setbacks as learning opportunities rather than failures reflect on her mistakes adjust her approach persist in her efforts and overcome obstacles you know tell her that this is not the end if you don't get it this time you can always try the next time cultivating resilience through perseverance and resilience a scholarship to attain a summer science program at a prestigious university can be earned this experience will boost her confidence and reaffirm her commitment to pursuing her passion for marine biology all this will help her to really come up and gain confidence next slide make every moment a learning opportunity the six c's of resilience the first is coping what do you understand by coping coping is can have effective balance between the positive and negative emotion and manage strong impulses you know children get very emotional you know so little children not only little we adults are not able to handle our emotions 
Why? Because we were not taught when you know we when we were small, the boys were told not to cry. Why not? You are a boy. How come you are you are crying? You are a boy. You are a girl. How can you do this? No. Let them come out, overcome from the problems. Yes. Let them come out with their emotions. Acceptance of emotion, which is so very important to cope with the negative emotion, with the positive emotion. Then we have the character. Who you are, what it is important to you. It's not no comparison. We should not compare with others. You know, we mothers have that comparison. Now see the ICSC results are that people have already started comparing. I know of a child who said that look at the one twin has got 91%, the other twin has got 80%. Look at him, he has got better. The other the twin has got into a gone into a depression. So why this? Let them let us appreciate and motivate as a child is. What things can change in this situation? Your reaction to the situation, how you can react to build confidence, which is so important, one strength and abilities. What are your strengths? Work on it. Never compare. Yes. How did you get through similar situation? What helpful or self defeating thoughts you are telling yourself? Very important. Always. Yes. Inspiration. You see, even we adults, when the principal praises that look at that teacher, she is doing that uh, a better method of teaching. Why don't you follow her? We don't like comparisons. Nobody likes comparison. Why do we compare? Often it happens in a class. We tell the children, oh, look at Rakesh. He's got his handwriting is so good. He's doing so well. But the same thing can be said in a different way. My dear children, you all write very well, but I'm sure you can write better and achieve success like this. Rakesh is writing like that. You know, so it's best not to compare, but to motivate them that you are doing well and you can do better. That confidence, ability to manage emotions and successfully solve problems. Focus on what you did correctly. Practice saying no and asking for help. Learn to say that. Building competence. Allowing yourself to take chances. Notice praise. Very important. Everybody likes appreciation. Strive for authentic success. Act in a wise mind. Rely on assistance and feedback from others. Help meet challenges. We should not shy back and take help from others. There's nothing wrong as a teacher also. What happens? Yes, we always, it's very nice to hear that you always motivate our children. Because that is what you got. We ourselves as adults, if somebody praises us, we feel so nice. It makes our day. You come to school really dressed and they say, oh, you're looking so nice today. Doesn't it make your day? Or, you know, this is what is required. So imagine if you and you feel so emotionally carried away, you feel so emotionally strong and happy. And what is required is happiness. A child has to be happy to be emotionally strong. Very important. Competence, the connection. There has to be a connection between the teacher, the child, the mother and the child. Because if there is no connection, how will the person survive? Imagine you come to a school and nobody talks to you. How will you feel? So that connection, that relationship, that binding is very, very important. So the six C's of resilience, coping, character, confidence, competence, connection, all these are very, very important. Now we come to the basic emotions. Next slide. You know, we have love, hatred, anger, sadness, fear. How are you feeling today? Are you feeling happy or sad, excited, energetic? Please put it in the chat. How are you feeling today? Yes, energetic, sad, happy. Yes, excited, very good. Stressed, I can understand you all have to go through so many sessions like this every day and you have to go. But we have our ups and downs. See, it is all in the power of mind, how you keep yourself. See, if you think when you get up in the morning, and if you think that I am going to have a horrible day, you will have a horrible day. So this is the power of mind. Yes, it's always this is what you think. That vibration you send to your body and that vibration you send it out to people. That is the energy which flows from you. Self-respect, very good. It's very important to love yourself and to have that self-respect. Next slide, please. Mood, temperament, personality, disposition, motivation. These are all words which we use when we come to emotions. How, what is the personality? What is the mood? Sometimes you say, today I'm in a bad mood. How to overcome that? How we have to keep ourselves happy and motivated. You know, self-motivation is the best thing. And who can keep yourself self-motivated? You yourself have to keep. 
yourself. Nobody from outside will motivate you. You have to keep yourself motivated. The power of thinking. All what you think will happen. If you think that, no, today is going to be a bad day, it will be a bad day. But if you think it's going to be a good day, it will be a good day. So it is all the power of thinking what you do. Now there is a spike. Next slide, please. Emotions. So once upon a time, uh, there were these, uh, uh, in the bustling city of Emotia, there lived five emotions. Joy, sadness, fear, anger, and love. Each emotion had its own vibrant personality and unique role in the lives of the inhabitants. Joy was like a ray of sunshine, spreading laughter, happiness, wherever he went, and loved organizing colorful festivals and bringing smiles to everyone. You know, love brings smiles to everyone. Sadness, though often misunderstood, had the heart of a goal. She empathized deeply with others' pain and was always there to offer a comforting shoulder to cry. Anger was fiery and passionate. Fiercely protective of his loved ones, while his temper could sometimes get the best of him, he also inspired courage and determination in those around him. Then there was fear. Fear, as usual, was always jittery fellow, always on edge, way of potential dangers. Despite his nervous na his nature, he played a crucial role in keeping the citizens safe by warning them of potential risk. That was fear, helping them stay cautious. And then there was love. The glue that held Emotia together. Do you agree? Love is the one which keeps everybody together. She radiated warmth and compassion, fostering deep connection between friends, families, and even strangers. How see how love binds us together, binds all the emotions together. One day, a great storm threatened to engulf a place called Emotia, sending its citizens into a panic. Now, what did Joy do? Joy rallied everyone together, reminding them of the strength they found in unity. What did sadness do? Offered her empathy, allowing people to acknowledge their fears and find comfort in each other's company. Anger fueled their determination to protect their homes and loved ones, channelizing its passion into strategic action. What did fear do? Fear sounded the alarm, urging everyone to take shelter and stay safe. And love, as always, embraced them all, reminding them that no matter what the challenge they faced, they would overcome them together. See how strong the love is. We have all the emotions. You know, it is not, if you're feeling sad, nothing wrong. If you're angry, nothing wrong. If you are, you know, have the fear, nothing wrong. Let it come out. So in the end, the storm passed, leaving behind a stronger, more Resilient emotion and the five emotions stood side by side, binding together, ready to face whatever trials came their way. So this is what about the emotion is that how we have these emotions. Let it come out. Let us see that sometimes it is good to be sad. Sometimes it is good to be uh, to have the fear. There's nothing wrong. You know, there is. So you can this can help a child to overcome this. Next slide. How one behaves in different situations. We experience a range of emotions from positive to negative in different situations. And these are further reinforced by people around us. Sometimes, you know, how you come and how the, the, the situation around the people around you. You may come in a very, you may have some problem at home and you come to school. But when you come to school, there are some happy teachers around you, a happy environment. And that makes you feel so happy. See how the vibrations make these emotions. It is necessary to express these emotions. Please, please, my humble request, when your children want to cry, let them cry. When they want to be angry, let them have anger. But yes, teach them how to control the anger. Let them shout. Let them go and do some punching on the punching bags. Let them take out their emotions. It is important to recognize that stress and anger emotion. Why do you think people are going to the gym and all that? Why? They're all going to the gym and doing those very uh, hard tasks over there to take out their emotions, their frustration. That can be tackled, controlled, decreased, comparing ourselves with our own selves. And that is how they help to overcome the emotion. You know, even abroad, there are the gyms which are open whole night. So people work throughout the day. They get so frustrated that then they go and Go to the gym and take out their frustrations. Next slide. 
Now there are certain things I can give you some tips, games that can be played to build emotional strength, which you can do it in your school. The first is known as the card game. Now what happens in this? Players are presented with a grid of cards, each featuring an emotion, happy, sad, angry, scared, whatever. They take turns flipping over two cards to find matching pairs of emotions. As they make matches, they discuss times when they have themselves felt those emotions and face they, and how they coped with this, fostering emotional awareness and expression. So this game will help them. Then we have feeling charades. Feeling charades, like you have the dumb charades. This is the feeling charade. Players take turns acting out different emotions. You know, you can have a class in a value education class or one of the classes where they take out their, they talk about different emotions. They enact their different emotions. Like for joy, they can laugh pretending to cry for sadness, stamping their feet for anger. So the other children in the class guess which emotion is being acted upon. After each round, players discuss strategies for managing and expressing that emotion they just acted out. How to manage if supposing we are happy or if we are sad or if we are angry. So the class discusses how to handle that emotion. So this, you know, they come out with lovely feelings they come out that okay this and they learn from each other that okay when i get angry i do this when i am sad i take out a book and write we have actually done this uh, activity in class and it has really helped them they are maintaining small diaries you know where they write what happens to them that when i am sad when i am happy and these emotions come out then there is a feelings journal each child has a journal where they can write or draw out, draw about their feelings you can prompt them like today i felt or one thing that made me happy or sad and to guide their reflection we can help them players can then share their journal entries with each other or with a trusty and uh, trusted adult to discuss the emotion and uh, and their experiences they can discuss about it we have emotion story dice now what happens in this players roll a set of dice featuring different emotion a dice like you have in ludo so you have the dice with different emotions so they use these emotions rolled they roll it out to create a short story, a scenario together they act out. And after telling the story, the players discuss how the characters in the story might have felt and how they could have handled the emotion in a healthy way. If they were the characters, they imagine themselves as characters in that story and how they would have felt and how they would have tackled that. So that emotion experience. So these simple games offer opportunities to children to explore, identify and express their emotions in a fun and interactive way, promoting emotional intelligence and resilience. Next slide. Understanding emotional strength, self-awareness, very important. Emotional regulation, developing the ability to manage, express emotions, adaptability, demonstrating flexibility, and the capacity to adjust to changing circumstances. Next slide. Now, Johari's window. How you might be wondering why this Johari's window? You must have heard about it, some of you. Now, this is a concept developed by psychologist Joseph Luft and Harrington Ingham. It's a tool for understanding self-awareness. My dear friends, before you actually teach a child how to control emotions, we have to learn ourselves, our self-awareness, and interpersonal communication, how you are doing it. So this Johari's window will help you to know your self-awareness and what can be done. It consists of four quadrants, open, hidden, blind, and unknown. Next slide. Now, applying this concept to children's emotional strength involves fostering the self-awareness and resilience. Open area, there are four quadrants in this. Open area, where information about the person known by the person and others too, where everybody knows about your behavior, your attitude, your emotion, your knowledge, your skills, everybody knows. Then we have the blind area, known about a person by others but unknown. The others know about it. You may be telling lies or you may not be behaving properly, but you are not aware of it. Then we have the hidden area, what is known to ourselves but hidden from others. You know it, but others don't know it. And then we have the unknown area, it contains information, feelings unknown to the person himself and others. So nobody knows about these feelings. This is the Johari's window. Next slide. Where is open area, known to self, unknown to self, hidden area, unknown to others, unknown area, unknown to others. So these are the four arenas. Next slide. 
open area. Now, what is it? Encourage children to express their thoughts and feelings openly. Provide a supportive environment where they feel safe to share their emotions without fear of judgment. And this will help them develop emotional intelligence. Now, for example, a child feels comfortable talking to their parents about their feelings, whether it's excitement about a new achievement or sadness over a friendship. So that openness should be there with the parents. They know that they won't be judged and that the emotions are valued and respected. Now, a child tells the teacher when he's feeling sad. So many times you must have come across a child coming and saying that I'm sad today because this has happened or this boy has hurt or he has missed his friend who has moved away. So they feel comfortable sharing their emotions because they know their teacher listens and cares. So encourage open communication by actively listening to the children, validating their emotions, creating a safe space for them, express themselves. This will help them develop trust and confidence in sharing their thoughts and feelings. Then we have, next slide please, hidden area. Help children explore and understand the hidden emotions, fears, insecurities. Encourage them to identify, acknowledge and addressing the hidden emotions. A child is afraid of darkness and hides his fears. Only time they hide their fear from others because they don't want to be appear weak. So they keep this fear to themselves and struggle to cope when the bedtime comes around. A child is nervous about a class presentation. So many times you, see, you tell them to come and speak, they don't want, but doesn't tell anyone because they don't want to show that they are scared. So keep that fear in them. Encourage children to identify and express their hidden emotions by asking open-ended questions. It's okay to talk about it. Fears, insecurities, vulnerabilities, all this without judgment. Next slide. Unknown area. Support. Next slide. Unknown area. Okay. Ah, blind. Blind area. Help. And it's the blind area. The previous slide, please. Previous slide. Ah. Blind area. Help children recognize their blind spots where they are not, not aware of the emotions or behavior. Provide constructive feedback. It's very important. A child does not realize that their aggressive behavior in the playground is upsetting other children until a teacher gently points out the actions affect others. A child doesn't realize that their teasing is hurting their siblings' feelings until their siblings tell them. So they don't intend to be hurtful, but become aware of the impact. So provide constructive feedback. Very important to give feedback, but a constructive and a positive feedback and guidance to help children recognize their blind spots. Encourage them to consider how these words and actions impact themselves and others fostering empathy and self-awareness. Next slide. Unknown area. Support children in exploring new experiences and challenges that expand their self-awareness that is unknown to himself and others. Awareness, encourage them to step out of their comfort zone. Usually they are in the comfort zone. There's some children who don't want to come out. Try out new activities. And this unknown and adapting to change, children develop confidence and resilience in the face of adversity. A child is hesitant to join a new sport. Why? Because he's afraid of failure. Most of the time when you tell them to do something, they say, no, I will not take part. I will not be able to speak. I will not be able to take part. But however, after trying out and discovering that they have a natural talent for the sport, they gain confidence and a sense of accomplishment. So a child is hesitant to try a new hobby, but only when they start trying it, they discover how much they enjoy. So encourage children to explore new experiences and challenges if they face concentration or are afraid. Support them in a stepping out in the comfort zone, stepping out of the comfort zone. So by applying this Johari Windows concept to the children, emotional development, Caregivers, educators can create a supporting and a nurturing environment where children feel empowered to understand and express their emotion. It's very important for them to express the emotion, develop empathy, self-awareness, build resilience to navigate life's challenges and adversity. Next slide. So there are various factors influencing resilience. Personal experiences are there sometimes, how you're brought up or what disaster you have faced as a child family and home environment, school and community are all which factors influence resilience. Next slide. The strategies, as we said, mindfulness, self-care, goal setting, seeking support and guidance from adults, counselors being there to be able to vent uh, their feelings. Next slide. Cultivating a growth 
uh, mindset, embracing challenges, helping them that this uh, failures are a stepping stone, learn from failures, celebrate progress, seek feedback. All these great constructive feedback will help them. Next slide. Stress management techniques, mindfulness, as I said, physical activity, very important for a child to have some play time for the child, physical activity so that they can take out their emotions, seeking support, teaching them time management. All this is going to help to reduce stress. Next slide. Fostering supportive relationship, fostering supporting relationship, peer support, very important to have good friends, teacher mentorship, family involvement, stress busters. Next slide. When angry, leave the scene. Talk about your feelings to someone you trust. Listen to your favorite music. Remember to do this when you're angry. Exercise or do some physical activity. Write and then destroy a letter to the person you're angry with. Watch a funny movie. All this will help you. Allow yourself, next slide, to take chances. Notice, strive, rely on assistance and feedback and others. Help challenges, validate their feelings, acknowledge your child's emotion. Don't say, okay, you cannot be angry or you cannot do that. Acknowledge your child's emotions. Next, celebrate both effort and growth. Focus on the child's effort and perseverance, not just the outcome. That's, oh, you have done the best. No, how you have worked hard and improved. Appreciate a child who has shown improvement. Let them know it is okay to make mistakes. Children learn by examples and my dear teachers, you are the role models because after home, they look up to their teachers, whatever the teachers may do, they learn from them. So empowering students for the future. Next slide. By nurturing resilience and emotional strength, we can empower students to navigate the challenges of the future with confidence. To a multifaceted approach that addresses personal, academic and social factors, we can equip the next generation. We have to equip them with a tool in their hand to thrive and to make a positive impact on the world. Next slide, make up your mind that no matter what comes your way, no matter how difficult, no matter how unfair, you will do more than simply survive. You will thrive in spite of it. There's a nice poem which I came across. Next slide. In the darkest night when shadows loom and the weight of the world feels like a tomb, there lies within a flame so bright, a spirit unbroken ready to fight. To trials and tribulations, it stands tall, refusing to crumble, refusing to fall. With every fall, it grows stronger still. Next slide. For adversity is the forge of will. The spirit endures forevermore. It rises from the ashes like a phoenix in flight, a beacon of in the darkness night. So when life's struggles seem too great to bear, remember the strength that lies within there. Next slide. There's a nice recipe for you which you can make for emotional strength. Okay, ingredients, take one cup of confidence, one tablespoon of belief, two cups of genuine kindness, two tablespoons of love, one teaspoon of self-care, one cup of mindfulness, mix them thoroughly, bake it for 20 minutes, sprinkle it with positivity. So you can have a nice cake like this. Next slide. Pool, P-H-U-L, you might be wondering what is this? Purity, P for purity, H for honesty, U for understanding, and L for love. Give this to your loved ones when you finish the session. Give it to them and say that this is a fool from me. Purity, honest, honesty, understanding, and love, which is so very important. Uh, please show the video, the video which I uh, have sent. A short video is there with which we end the session. There's a very nice video. I would request the... Let me see the video. Yeah, please show the video. Can the picture be shown? Yes, ma'am. Just wait. Uh, are we able to show the video? Yes, ma'am. Just yeah. wait. Yeah, yeah. Because that's the last which is there. I can understand how restless you are. Here's Zindagi. Yes, you can start. Your present to 
ruin a beautiful future. Albert Einstein ने कहा था, पागल वो होता है जो रोज रोज सेम काम करता है और चाहता है कि रोना, गुस्सा, ये खुद पर एक्सप्रेस नहीं करने दिया। अब प्यार कैसे एक्सप्रेस करें? जब हम अपने आप को अच्छी तरह समझ लेते हैं तो दूसरा क्या समझते हैं जिंदगी में जब कोई पैटर्न बनता है या कोई आदत बनती है तो उसके बारे में अच्छी तरह से सोचना चाहिए जीनियस वो नहीं होता जिसके पास हर सवालों का जवाब जीनियस वो होता है जिसके पास हर जवाब पर पहुंचने का पेशेंस अभी कभी मुश्किल रास्ता सिर्फ इसलिए चुनते हैं क्योंकि हमें लगता है इम्पोर्टेंट चीजें पाने के लिए उन्हें मुश्किल रास्ता बनाना चाहिए अपने आप को पनिश करना बहुत जरूरी समझते हैं पर वाय आसान रास्ता ही नहीं चुन सकते क्या बुराई है इसको आज करके जब हम उस मुश्किल का सामना करने के लिए तैयार ही नहीं है Let us take out our emotions and thank our Almighty and everyone. Thank you, everyone, for being so considerate. And able. I'm sure you'll be able to take some gain something from here so that you can apply it and use it in your school so that the children help them to become children to become emotionally strong resilient children so that they can face the challenges in life have this attitude of gratitude the 10 lifestyles select a few powerful high energy words called positive affirmations affirmation means the thoughts which you repeat in the morning when you get up say I am a powerful being. I am a peaceful being. I am a fearless being. My body is perfect and healthy and will always be. God's power and blessings is a circle of protection around me and my family. God's circle of protection is around the planet. Nothing can enter into the circle. Circle God's blessing around my work. Thank you. Thank you and all the best. Thank you, ma'am. It was very nice session. Thank you. Thank you, Rocky. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. So we can leave now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, Rocky. Thank okay. you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.